Joining us uh, tonight, uh, uh, all the way from uh, Ibarra, I believe, uh, is uh, Santos Ahilele. He's the founder of the Niger Nigerian Taekwondo Advancement Initiative. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight, uh, Santos. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And um, let's talk a bit more about Taekwondo, uh, especially at the Olympic Games. You, you obviously watch with keen interest. Elizabeth Diana chose uh, participation at the Games. Um, did, were you surprised that uh, she lost out as she did? Yeah, I think every one of us was surprised because um, it was it was pretty much a situation of just not being around at, at that particular moment. It wasn't a case of being the, you know, losing to a better athlete, so to speak. It was more of a case of, you know, she just didn't turn up on that day. And, you know, it happens to everyone. Top athletes have, you know, those days like that. Elizabeth is a fantastic player. She had won a couple of medals just before the Olympics. She was, you know... If you were a betting man, you would say she had good odds, so to speak, to, to pick something, even a bronze medal, but it just happened to be um, someone else's day. Well, uh, Santos, you're putting together a tournament uh, that, uh, that's supposed to invite between six to eight countries and some of the finest uh, Taekwondoins across Africa. Tell us a bit more about that initiative and why you decided to uh, pretty much uh, put this together. Yeah, so I was enjoying the conversation before, you know, I logged in. So it, it pretty much segues into what it is we're, we're thinking about, you know, because first of all, we want to give our athletes exposure. That's just what it is, right? We want Nigerian athletes to have a chance to compete with these guys. Um, sometimes, you know, the economic um, intricacies of our country, um, you know, they, they beat us at the level that, you know, we are, we are connected to. So as sports people, you know, in 2015, what you would use to go to an international event in Kenya is not the same thing you would use to go to an international event in Kenya today. So those economic harsh realities are also hitting sportsmen very, very toughly. So when, when Nigerian athletes have an opportunity like this to be at home, like just take a bus to Ibado, and you're competing against those guys whom you would have needed a visa to compete against. It's one thing. I mean, win or lose, you you learn, and, you know, and that's what counts. And I, I think someone on the call referenced that as well, like um, with the basketball or rather the handball team mm. um, in relation to exposure. More, more often than not, our players don't just get enough exposure. And so it's like you're going for an exposure when you finally go for an international event. Uh, uh, Santos, I mean, Lagos is the commercial hub of Nigeria. But of course, why are you taking this to Ibadan? Any particular reason? Um, we we want Nigeria to feel to feel to feel Taekwondo generally and not you know just centralize it anywhere. And of course, Oyo State has also shown commitment in in sports. Oyo State has a very strong Taekwondo team, and um, there's also some level of political salience in relations to sports. You know, and and th these things count more often than not. So positioning Ibadan as a as a hub. For, for sports and Taekwondo in itself is, is something we think can happen while Lagos and Abuja and of course Rivers and Benin, some other strong strong locations, they hold the fort as well. Mm. Um, Santos, um, for me, um, I believe very much in grassroots sports and um, Taekwondo definitely has a hand in it as well. So for the viewers at home, mm. for parents who have children who might have an interest in this, what is the best way for them yeah. to get involved in Taekwondo and at what age do you advise that um, children or a young person gets involved with aspirations of becoming a professional? Um, so I think that, and I don't have the data, but I know that a fair amount of schools now um, would, would actually teach you basic Taekwondo. Um, and, you know, there are many, literally almost it, every turn there's a school around. But of course, you can go to www.ninjataekwondo.org and reach out to us and we would find somebody in your location. As regards, what would I tell a parent? I think that there's also scientific evidence that says that when children, you know, do physical activities like martial arts very early, it also improves, you know, coordination mentally and allows them learn literacy and numeracy better. As in, that's just one example in itself about how a child can be a better human being beyond the skills, of course, of self-defense and, you know, discipline that you would get. It also allows your children to learn better. So, you know, I encourage parents more often than not to allow their children just go dive right into martial arts at the age of three, four, you know, and, and, and it improves, you know, the building blocks of their life generally. Mm. Well, Santos, it's interesting you mentioned something about, uh, earlier on about um, exposure and the fact that uh, the um, basic economic issues we're dealing with in Nigeria 
hampers the ability of many of these federations to, be able to take athletes outside of the country to give them the much needed exposure. So how do you think we can bridge that gap? Is it by hosting tournaments like this uh, that, that you, you're putting together? Can that help us bridge the, um, uh, what's, what's it called now, the exposure gap, the experience gap that we require to get our athletes to the top level? Yeah, so two things. I think that first of all, we need to be serious about school sports, right? Because 41% of your population is under 13 already. So if four out of 10 people are under 13 and you have sporting facilities and, and a sporting ecosystem for them, you've already generated demand, right? And demand is what we don't have in Nigerian sport today. Beyond football, there's not much demand for basketball. There's not much demand for athletics, but we have human beings a massive bulk of human beings waiting on one corner and we just need somebody to ignite the flames to to to, to strike that demand and that's why we need competitions like this one that's why we need inter-house sports to be what they used to be that's why we want shell cup that's why we want athletics uh, at, uh, events for, for for secondary school students taekwondo events for university students things like this we have the population that is waiting to be your free micro influencers and the sponsors will then reach out to you it's just that you know with all due respect to the federations, more often than not, you know, we're also guilty of being um, docile. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's the word, you know. We can also make moves. I mean, the, the Ministry of Sports has its own... I mean, we, we, can, we can do another episode about the Ministry of Sports, if you know what I mean. But, um, but, you know, we can also do our little things within our ecosystems to begin to strike conversations. It's not like we had billions to, to put these events together. We just had letters to write and people to trigger and make some people interested and, and now you have six countries participating at an event that was planned within two months you see what i mean now think about how we can do this in 12 months you know and if everybody else tries the same thing in boxing and weightlifting and of course the government takes ownership and you know makes the ministry of education makes school sports a thing we saw how the U.S. data was, right? You saw how many students from U.S. universities won a medal for the, for the United States at the Olympics. And then we also saw Nigeria won no medal, but we saw Nigerians winning medals. So, mm. so there's, there's human capital. We just need to create an, a system, an ecosystem that, you know, creates champions. Okay. Look up quickly. No, I was just going to ask, I'm looking forward to the next Olympic Games. I mean, you were a former national champion for Nigeria, presented and captain team Nigeria at uh, the University um, Olympics back in 2015. Now, going forward to the Olympics, now we had one representing Nigeria. Are you expecting to see more athletes competing for Nigeria in Taekwondo? Yeah, I think one of the last times Nigeria as a country won a medal in, at the Olympics at an individual event, it was from Taekwondo as well. So we had a good start. And we, we, the videos didn't sustain, you know, we weren't successful with sustaining. So 2028 LA, I tell you for free that Nigeria will have four athletes and at least one medal. Okay. Four athletes, as you're talking about, four taekwondoans, that's what you're saying? Competing at the Olympics and at least one medal. From taekwondo? Take it to the bank. Okay. So finally, before we let you go, what uh, can uh, fans who be watching this event either live uh, at the stadium or watch it, tuning in on to New, to New Central on Saturday, what can they expect to see? I mean, my facial expression is my response. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I can see joy. Love so that. basically, you're telling us that our fans can uh, basically <laughs> just have a great time. So thank you very much, Santos Ahilele, uh, for joining us tonight. We look forward to your event. And of course, you know that we here at New Central and Game On are supporting you massively. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, guys, Cheers, man. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>